Hey everyone, it's Allison Harrell with the Fort Bend Museum, and today's video is all about policy. So we are going to be comparing and contrasting the policies that Sam Houston and Maribel B. Lamar had when they were president of the Republic of Texas. Now, rather than me tell you all of their policies or their thoughts and ideas, I do have two people who will be speaking for them. Now, we're going to be looking at the policies of Sam Houston and Maribel B. Lamar that they had during their presidencies in the Republic of Texas. When Texas became a republic, there were two distinct nations of Native Americans that soon became an issue for the young government. So let's first ask Sam Houston, what is your plan to deal with the Native Americans that are currently residing in the Republic of Texas? You know, before we get started, um, I would like to talk about my, my little friend, Lamar, who always fancied himself to be you know, in the image of Napoleon. However, if you do get to talk to my friend Lamar, can you ask him how his inauguration speech went, please? Let's get into our issues. The first topic that we need to cover are the Native American tribes that live in Texas starting in 1836. So Sam Houston, what is your plan on how to handle the Native American tribes in the newly formed Republic? Well, I'll tell you. In all my years of living with my Indian brothers, I learned a lot of things. One of those things is that if we build and equip and train an army, that it's gonna be a waste of our treasury. We're gonna to spend too much money on tracking down a group of people that we'll never catch. Think of the expense, just, it's just a waste of money. I believe it's better for all parties, both Texian and Indian, to live in peace. Okay, now let's toss the same question over to Lamar. Lamar, what's your plan for the Native Americans living in Texas? You know what, I think Sam Houston's policy regarding the Native Americans is far too lenient. Very typical of the gutter snipe that he is. Native Americans have absolutely no integrity. Land could be better used by colonists here in Texas. There's no chance in negotiating with these Native Americans and there's no chance of coexisting with them. Okay, General, let's move on to the next topic. What should the future of the Republic be? Do you think that the Republic of Texas might one day join the United States of America as a state? Well, I'll tell you. It's of course official policy of Texas that Texas can sustain itself as an independent republic forever. However, I'll tell you what I told my friend Jackson, that it's my great desire that Texas be annexed to the United States in a manner of justice and reciprocity to both parties. Okay, now I'm gonna to toss the same question to Mayor Bobby Lamar. What are your feelings on annexation by the United States? Well, in response to that, I think that the Republic of Texas will exist for all of time. I also think that this Texas of ours should extend our holdings, our land, our Republic, all the way west to the Pacific Ocean. I hope that the folks who live out west, well, they see 
the world the same as we do. Matter of fact, I sent 21 ox-driven wagons with men to protect the wagons all the way out there to Santa Fe. And unfortunately, the folks who lived there in Santa Fe did not see life the same way as we do. I, uh, furthermore, I think that Texas, the republic of ours, should be recognized as an independent nation by all of Europe and including Mexico. Okay, now that we know where you would like to feature the Republic of Texas, but let's flash forward a bit. Now we're looking at the late 1850s. Texas has joined the United States of America as the 28th state, and there are rumblings of division between the states. What do you think that the answer to these rumblings should be? Well, I can say that the growing crisis in this country troubles me more than any previous challenge to our great republic. To have agitators in both the North and the South generating such animosity for the remainder of the country, it's unconscionable. To have secessionists and abolitionists pit the rest of the country against ourselves is simply not sustainable. And I can tell you from personal experience in two wars, it's not something that I would wish upon the United States. Brother fighting brother, it will only lead to blood and smoking ruin. Same question to Lamar. What do you think the state of Texas should do? Well, unlike that man, Sam Houston, I do not think we should stay with the Union. I strongly disagree with the Compromise of 1850, and the United States has gone to great lengths to threaten our way of life and our way of keeping our families fed and earning a living. Perfect. Thanks for joining us today and a huge thank you to our special guests and we'll see you next time.